Jane Birkin, actress, singer, activist, and fashion icon. Today we take a look back at her life. Like so many others, my Sunday morning started with the news that none other than Jane Birkin had passed away at the age of 76 in her Paris apartment. I wanted to take a moment today and do a special episode to kind of share a little bit more about her history and her story, her legacy, and dive in a little bit about the Hermes Birkin. Before we dive in though, hey guys, my name's Caleb. I post luxury and lifestyle related content every Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday. If that's something you're into, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below. Consider joining the membership. Link will be down in the description as well. And let's dive in. Jane's story begins in December of 1946 when she was born to actress Judy Campbell and father David Birkin, who was a Royal Navy lieutenant, commander, and World War II spy. Jane's career got its start in 1965 with an uncredited role in the film The Knack and How to Get It. The following year in the movie The Blow Up, she kind of got a rise to fame because she did a nude scene in which her husband at the time, John Barry, told her she wouldn't have the balls to do. Sure enough, she showed him. And I think that kind of describes Jane Birkin in a nutshell. She had such a zest and a zeal for life she found the beauty in all the small things and, and really, you know, grabbed life by the horns, which I think is, is kind of an inspiration to, to live our life in, in general, right? Now, you may know John Barry. He was the composer for the soundtrack, the eponymous song for the James Bond franchise. I mean, it's, it's kind of an iconic song. Sadly, though, their marriage was very short-lived. I think she was married by the age of 18, and by 1920, John Barry had already left her for another woman, I believe, and she was devastated. She was left alone with her daughter, and she was like, oh, well, you know, I've got now I've got to find work. So that's when she auditioned for the 1969 film Slogan, even though she did not speak a single word of French. Kind of fabulous. On the set, she met her soon-to-be husband, and I, I think the love of her life, Serge Gainsbourg, who is basically the Bob Dylan of France. Kind of an iconic singer and songwriter. Later on in 1969, the song Je T'aime would come out with heavy moaning, her, her mumbling love, you know, whatnot, like it was pretty scandalous at the time. Both the Pope and the BBC banned the song. So, I mean, obviously instant success, right? Like, I, I'll link it down below if you haven't heard it before, but it is kind of an iconic song, not gonna lie. Fast forward to 1984. This is when, you know, the Jane Birkin that we all know here in the luxury space kind of comes into play. So not only has she successfully mastered acting, she's also a singer, both with Serge Gainsbourg. He would write songs for her up until his death in 1991. And I think up until recently, she was actually touring with an orchestra, singing his music music still to this day, which is kind of beautiful. <laughs> Up until 1984, all the photos that you can see of her, she's carrying around that beautiful wicker basket. How very French of her, right? Very classic, very casual, and I think effortlessly chic was kind of just how she lived her life and her wardrobe and whatnot. We all know the story, but in case you don't, 1984, she is boarding a plane. They upgrade her to first class. She's trying to stick her bucket in the overhead compartment, which we all know it was a pain <laughs> to accomplish, and it falls down, spilling her contents on the floor. Little did she know, she was seated right next to Dumas of Hermes, hello, we all know him, and he looked at her and he's like, well, you know, why don't you have a, a better bag? And she's like, well, Hermes doesn't make this with pockets. She didn't know he worked for Hermes. <laughs> and on the back of an airplane sickness bag, he kind of sketches, they, they confer, and, and she just wanted a bigger bag with pockets. She was aware of the Kelly, obviously, as we all are, and she wanted something like that, but bigger. Not quite as big as and heavy as her suitcase, but something that she could stuff with pockets, you know, and hang all of her charms on. And we've all seen her Birkins through the years. They're, they're truly a vibe. Sure enough, about a month later, Hermes calls her. They say, you know, would you like to come in? We have the bag ready for you. It's, it's done up in cardboard. It's, it's just the mock-up, of course. And she instantly falls in love with it. You know, she pointed out a few little tweaks here and there. Basically, the Birkin, if you're not familiar with it, is loosely based off of the Oakwa, or the hack, as we all call it. Iconically, it originally came out the shoulder strap, and which would kind of 100% be a vibe. And, you know, she she went, she she looked at the bag, she gave it the final okay, and they asked her, they're like, you know, can we can we name this after you? And she's like, well, what, what do you mean name this after me? They're like, well, we already have the Kelly, we already have Mr. Dumois, his travel bag, we, we would love to name this the Birkin. She goes, oh, you know, that's that's quite flattering, I, of course. And I think up until this day, she received a, a yearly 
sum of 30 grand as payment for using her name on the bag. And I think in agreement, she could pop into Hermes and, and pick up a new Birkin at any time. But much like her, her truly, you know, joie de vie kind of living and her, her casualness, she never really saw the, the advantage of owning more than one Birkin at a time. So she'd usually typically go in, I think the first one was a black box, and then she'd pick up black Togo, typically 35 centimeters is I think the size that she preferred. And she'd always like slap her stickers on it, her charms. And I think iconically, she would always pick up the new bag and to break it in, she would throw it on the ground and stomp on it. She actually did this on a Japanese interview and I, I'll try and find the footage and link it down below. I mean, iconic, like you, you cannot describe Jane Birkin without using the, the word iconic in some type of way, both with her acting, her singing, her activism and, and inspiring one of the most important handbags of our time. Just like truly an icon, like the, the, this woman really grabbed life by the horns and just like, lived it, which is astonishing. It's truly amazing. And I think that something can be said too for who she was outside of the limelight. She was always an activist for both women's rights, LGBTQ+, if something was going wrong in the world, she was very outspoken about like the treatment in Tibet, things like that. She was actually banned from China when she was doing her orchestral tour a few years ago, couldn't get a visa into the country. And, and she even tried to push Hermes to change their practices with their exotics, especially when it came to the Birkin. She really wanted her name taken off of it when they used like an exotic, like the Nauticus croc, lizard, you know, ostrich, things like that. So truly, she was just like a, a pioneer of her times, both from the 60s on up until today. Um, tragically, she, she did know a lot of sadness in her life, both with the early passing of her, you know, second husband, Serja, in 1991. Her daughter, Kate, her oldest daughter, you know, lost her battle with depression about five, six years ago, I think in 2015, 2016. So she, she has known, you know, some sadness in her life. But still, that didn't that didn't stop her though from from really enjoying hers and and pushing the limits and 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 every facet of her life. She truly an icon. She she's going to be missed. And part of me has to ask, like, what what does this mean though for for the Birkin moving forward? As you all know, like the Birkin, it's it's highly coveted. It's one of the most expensive and hard to get handbags out there right now. Are we still going to be seeing it as something precious? You know, something in a, in a beautiful showcase kept perfect, or you know. To a true testament for Jane, are we going to start actually using our Birkins, slapping stickers on it, charms, stomping on them, like truly using them as like everyday tools, you know, to get through the, the everyday living? I don't know. Also, what is it going to mean for pricing? Is, is pricing going to jump for a little bit? Are we going to see a surge in Birkin collecting and, and, and subsequent pricing in the near future? I don't know. It'll be interesting to see. What I do know, though, is that with Jane Birkin's passing, we, we've truly lost a, a beautiful individual in all facets. So I just wanted to take a moment today, put out a special episode with, with the news we received yesterday on Sunday. We've lost a big light today in, in both the entertainment and in the fashion space. So anyway, thank you for joining me today, guys. I will see you again on Wednesday at my regular time. Until then, stay safe, have fun. Bye-bye.